Stanley Kubrick once said, a film should be more like music than like fiction. It should be a progression of moods and feelings. The theme, what's behind the emotion, the meaning, all that comes later. I like this quote because it really puts a lens on the things that really matter to the viewer, the experience. I'm here to tell you why my latest love letter to Tokyo will not only be a new and exciting experience for Netflix audiences, but also why my vision and direction for the film will resonate with audiences both domestic and abroad. While attaining my bachelor's degree for digital cinematography with Full Sail University, I had the opportunity to make a short film in Japan called The Tokyo Experience. My goal with this film was not only to gain practical experience on location, but mainly to build a story that bridges the gap between our world and theirs through evocatively stimulating visuals, framing a multiculturally based character development. No spoilers here. I remember my first trip to Japan, seeing Tokyo for the very first time with my own eyes. It didn't feel real. All my life, I had only dreamed of stepping foot into the city of the future. Unlike Bill Murray's entrance from 2003's cult classic, Lost in Translation, waking up to a wall of neon lights from his cab window, I, on the other hand, walk out from the Shinjuku station to a flood of people at the horizon of those same neon lights. And in that moment, I look up and I see the perfect set, the perfect backdrop, neon so bright with their reds and their whites. I just remember wanting to capture all that magic and showing audiences a fresh perspective on the Tokyo experience. This new film is going to be all about the streets of Tokyo, contrasting foreign and domestic points of view. You may be wondering, why not get anyone else to film it? Well, over the past 10 years, I taught myself the Japanese language, then finally flew over several times meeting many colorful characters and entertainment industry professionals. Also, making this short film taught me a lot about simple things like scheduling and getting legal consent to film in certain locations. On top of that, with my education on lighting and color theory at Full Sail, my neon obsession got to play a huge role in accenting my scenes and environments, paying homage to visual styles of films like the extremely cyberpunk Blade Runner 2049, directed by Denis Villeneuve, and the beautifully lit moody thriller only God Forgives, directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. They showed me how color can almost be a character on its own, from the beautifully mesmerizing blues, purples, and pinks, to the intimidating intensity of a scene bathed in red. Definitely a powerful storytelling tool. Most importantly, the timing for this film couldn't be better. The 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics just ended. Tokyo is literally trending worldwide. The public interest is at its highest in decades. Audiences are ready for a brand new, futuristic and emotionally driven visual feast. After all, it's going to be the sweetest eye candy with the tiny scoop of fresh wasabi on the side for the tears. With this film, we would not only be giving the whole world a new glimpse into the city of the future, but we would also be strengthening our bond with Japan allowing more collaboration and mutual understanding of one another. So let's go back to the future and give this film the love and support it needs. Head on over to Tokyo2020film.com to learn more about how you can bring this unique viewing experience to all black mirrors with the big red N on it. Thanks for watching.